Welcome to the Think Fitness Life podcast, Mindset, Exercise, Nutrition. We are three personal trainers and health coaches dedicated to providing information in these realms to promote critical thinking and assist you in your life practice. My name is Matt Gluckman, and as always with me are my co-hosts, Eric Menchie and Mike Erso. What's Eric, good? Eric, with, with us? I am. Mike, what's up? Yo, what's going on, fellas? There you go. They are here. I didn't lie to you guys. <laughs> we like to explore topics related to mindset, exercise, and nutrition. We look into the psychology, the science, the behavior, and how it can shape your fitness lifestyle. So take a listen as we peel back the onion, fall down the rabbit hole, and we hope we, hope we can help guide people along their journey as they continue to strengthen their body, mind, and spirit. Man, that, that's always a tongue twister for me. We hope we can help. We hope we can help. Um, this week... We're actually just going to no script it. We're just going to rant and rave. Just listen to no scripted. By no script, he means unscripted. Talk. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Unfiltered, raw and unfiltered. He just got back from uh, um, English class. Really. No, I'm pretty, I'm pretty bad. And I stumble over my words over this because I, I want to just, you know, make sure I sound good for everyone who's out there that all, all 10 of you that listen to this podcast want to make sure that you can hear what I'm saying. Um, but it's important to just mention that, you know, we may rant and rave, but we're always here to help. So feel free to reach out, thinkfitnesslife at gmail.com. And yeah, let's get it started. Let's get it popping. It's Monday. Everybody had, a, I'm sure, a great day. I had a great day. I had some great news. Um, so that's why we're flying high today. Big time. Pun, pun intended. And it's Thanksgiving week. That's right. That's right. You guys got Thanksgiving plans? Stuff my face. Yeah. With me. Yeah. Yeah. I love pumpkin pie. Oh, it's my favorite thing in the world. You're like the fourth person that I, said that today. And I'm like, really? I didn't know that many people liked it too. Yeah. Apple's way better. Well, yeah, all day, every day. Apple pie with a side of ice cream a la mode. Oh, yeah. That- I had some of that last night. Someone had oh. some homemade pie oh, already. Man. That was so good, oh. so good. But um, I gotta ask you guys: do you do you do like a a crazy hard workout pre Thanksgiving? Because that's that's what I do, so I don't feel guilty when I have like five pieces of pie after dinner. Um, for me, last couple holidays, um, I have done an open mat jujitsu class on the morning of the holiday, and it's been a blast because everyone's off work, so most everybody's there that isn't there you know, that you kind of see sporadically throughout the week. So it's a lot of fun. People just kick back because they know they're going to get real hammered, you know, that night and just indulge. So yeah, we, we get after it, you know, it's a lot of fun. I didn't know that you did jujitsu for that long. I, I thought did, you just yeah. started like but, this year. Uh, I've done it since, you know, July, I think um, the first holiday and every other holiday after that, I started on this 4th of July, I think was the first day. The first holiday. Oh, gotcha, so gotcha, gotcha. Because... Yeah. I, th- I was I meant specifically oh. Thanksgiving because I, I like I typically crush like a really hard long workout because then in my mind I'm like I'm just replenishing all my glycogen and repairing my yeah. my body I need to eat so much more absolutely like- now what, what, what do you do, do, you, do you just go like crazy I mean for the first like 15 minutes and then I'm just like beaten and broken but I just keep pushing through and then just do like anything like i i might start with like some squats deadlifts you know as like a strength type way but then i just go like by the end i'm lifting like a bodybuilder just like a hypertrophy just curls and, and you know literally by the end working from big muscle groups to small groups i'm like doing freaking um what do they call them when you're plate pinches when you're walking oh, yeah. to yeah. kill your grip and all that stuff so basically just so I, I, I like just to trying to make that. yourself as hungry as possible before you just sit down and just go to town. Well, the hunger won't be the issue. It's more of like, like where's that food gonna go right. type deal. So if I set myself up to to let that all that food go into repairing my body, then you know, oh well, I I need to put these calories okay. away. Um, but if I skip my workout, yeah, I don't I don't think I'd be nearly as hungry. No, I love that's what I love is is working out early. Obviously, having like a small breakfast, hit a workout, and then just wait, and just everyone just, <laughs> just, just wait, wait for dinner. Like, yeah. not even yeah. eat anything in the morning post just, workout. We're talking like the next three meals are straight Thanksgiving okay. dinner. Oh, because you'll like you'll have leftovers and left. Like, I mean, you'll uh, oh, go yeah. for rounds and stuff like that. Like 
wait an hour, then go back for more. Four to five rounds. Wow. Damn, yeah. son. On loads. You guys watch uh, football on Thanksgiving typically? Uh, like, is that a tradition too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm usually oh, there's, there's, probably like, like passed out by them from eating noon. too much, but I try to watch. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and there's some college on too. Yeah. Matt, do you get the meat sweats or just pass out from the trip to fan? <laughs> I thought that was I thought the that was a myth. I thought it was more of the fact that you're just eating so much turkey that you have a little bit extra tryptophan. But um, I th- honestly I think what happens is I just overeat and then I get uncomfortable and I want to lay down and then I, by then I'm laying down and I'm probably stoned because let's be real like <laughs> I've probably been I've probably been high for every Thanksgiving in the past like <laughs> ten Thanksgivings like ever since I was at my grandparents I had to like sneak downstairs and like go to the pool room where it kind of smelled like chlorine and like hit a bowl, hold the hit and like blow it out of the window and then like spray myself with Febreze and wash my hands, put in eye drops and run back up. And uh, they probably still so I, high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably just about the amount of food I eat. So, so by then after I've eaten basically like two or three people's dinners, essentially in, in one or two plates and I'm a little stoned and I'm, I'm laying on the couch. I, I think I just, that's, that's so, so here, really, really uh, um, um, obscure reference. So, because we, we're talking about drugs and we're talking about Thanksgiving and holidays, right? So, they go hand in hand. So, this is really interesting. This would be this would be interesting, you guys. So, <laughs> they go hand in hand. Tri- tryptophan is actually so you know what DMT is dimethyl trip. So it's a psychedelic drug, right? D- uh, DMT yes. is dimethyl well, tryptophan. You'll have dreams, well, right? Tryptophan is actually a. I believe it's a like derivative of the DMT molecule. So it's actually made endogenously in the body, right? And we don't eat enough tryptophan to make us actually trip like we would in DM, taking DMT. But you, the same substance is also found, small, small bits of DMT are found in um, cacao as well. I found us out recently. And so if you eat enough cacao, it can actually give you a slight trip. Uh, this is really fascinating. I mean, I don't, I don't know that you can actually. And, you know, and most, but yeah, most of it. No, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you have like more vivid dreams and stuff like that. But it's actually more of the tryptophan being a substrate for um, being converted into um, serotonin, melatonin. And I remember, I remember like breaking this fact down because. I used to take melatonin to sleep and it was it was so invariable. Like you don't know how much of a, the actual active ingredient you are getting in each pill because it's not FDA regulated because it's all natural. So it doesn't need to be kind of looked upon and regulated in that, in that way. And I remember like talking to my dad like, dad, I'm having like some really crazy dreams. Um, and he, he was like, yeah, it's melatonin. The same things that happen if you eat too much turkey. So then I looked it up and that's what it is. It's not the tryptophan that it itself is necessarily making – you sleepy, but it's it's it just is a chemical that's right. going to help induce more serotonin and melatonin production, which then would help create that, um, that you know that that dream or that visual type yeah. deal. Yeah, the snoozer post Thanksgiving. Yeah, do you nap. ever take one then? No. Or you take a pre Thanksgiving nap? Mm-hmm. Mention it sounds like you you work um, out in the morning, I, for me, like hibernate like- until dinner time, and then just crush food. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's tough because you get a, you hibernate, but I, you know, you smell all the cooked food and you're like, ah, shit, I'm starving. So I got to keep myself busy. The football game's on, you know, I got to stay away. That's interesting. I get really hungry. Yeah, I, I work bad. out the same day as, as Thanksgiving too, but um, my my big, yeah, that is always Thanksgiving day. What about you, Mike? So you, you roll, you do BJJ like in the I morning, Thanksgiving will, day? Yeah, um, or I definitely will work out. I mean, the gym's open, obviously. Most gyms are twenty four seven, or you know, open. Uh, Most gyms are uh, so empty on Thanksgiving. Uh, yes and no. I don't. Well, yes, because you guys you used to work in the financial district downtown in Boston. I used to work in in Back Bay, which was the residential area of Boston, and we were always yeah. busy on holidays because everyone was off work and everybody walked. So you know, snow days, holidays. Um, all those types of types huh. of days, you know, True. the gym was always packed. Now it wasn't like it's, there was no six, seven a.m. rush anymore. Everyone like basically like just kind of 
sloshes in at like, you know, 10, 11 in the morning after they sleep in a little bit. Because some people go out drinking the night before Thanksgiving, right? Because you got Wednesday <laughs> off. No, I'm, I get to sleep in tomorrow. I'm going to get sloshed the night before too. So, but uh, yeah, I'm not a big drinker. So, yeah, this will you know. be my... Th- this will be my third gym being at Thanksgiving. And I feel like every gym has been the Thanksgiving day itself has been like kind of busy in the morning, but not like any busier than any other normal day, but it's dead after that. But the Wednesday before Thanksgiving was always a madhouse. Like I remember at equal, like right in, in Equinox financial district, that was like yeah. the really busy day, but yeah, nobody came. I don't think anybody, maybe like, Maybe there were like 10 people, including so, the trainers. Let me ask you guys this. So you'll, th- you know, Thursday, obviously we'll all indulge over Thanksgiving. Now, after Thanksgiving, will you do any tor- sort of like detoxing or fasting or sauna or something to kind of cleanse the body a little bit? Or do you kind of just get back to, you know, regular eating habits? Uh, I'll probably... Well, well, what will probably happen is I'll probably skip breakfast the next day and start up again at dinner the next day or at post-workout. And then, yeah, I probably won't do anything crazy special. I'll just go like on a, maybe like a longer hike, yeah. a couple longer hikes on that weekend, like that Saturday or Sunday. No, I don't typically. Why, are you going to do something to detox? I crap for a couple of days. But yeah, I just, I just, I, I've got another jiu-jitsu <laughs> competition I signed up for on December 2nd, so yeah, I can't either. go – you know, hog, hog wild. And yeah. just, cause I gotta, I gotta weigh in at a specific weight. So I can't go, uh, can't go crazy. Yeah. Try to get right back on the train on Friday. That's what I tell a lot of people to do. Like you're still going to have leftovers, but you know, go in Friday, get a good lift in. And then most people have it off or, you know, you're going to have the time to work. Let's out. be real. The people do who something. have the problems at Thanksgiving and around the holidays aren't even listening to this podcast. Cause we're talking about the people who who already said, oh, it's Thanksgiving this week. I'm not going to work out. Like, what the fuck? You have Monday and Tuesday and probably Wednesday. You could squeeze a workout in, right? They didn't prioritize it. They're blowing the workout off. And wow, I really am about to start a rant here. Uh, (laughs) It's the name of the the day. Um, But so then these people uh, will really, really overeat and they'll use the the holidays as an excuse to keep eating really crappy stuff and make really bad selections. On the, yeah yeah exactly exactly and and then these same people the ones that wouldn't be listening to our podcast wouldn't work out from thanksgiving to christmas because they know they're gonna fall off their diet again and they're like why should i get back on it's like and it's just gonna be down again in, in a week or two and then what they do is after they've done shitty diet habits after christmas so they've done a full month of uh a tox not even a detox a, on tox and then they're going to say, oh, it's New Year's. What's my New Year's resolution? I'm going to join a gym and I'm going to take control of my health and get back the quality of my life. And then they join the gym and they go, I think the statistics said that they like 70% of people go a couple times that week or that month and then never show up again. Those are the people that aren't listening to this podcast that I, that I wish we could reach. But then you have the other people who are listening to this podcast and I feel like 90% of them are actually going to do really good ha- – make really good habits or make really good choices, but they're going to overplay it in their own head and look down upon themselves and be really guilty. And I and I, I tell people, enjoy your Thanksgiving. Like that's what health and fitness is supposed to be about. Right. You, you diet, you exercise, you, you're a responsible person because then you get times like this to enjoy life because all that we do to, to take care of ourselves is supposed to enhance life, not get in the way. This is a time – where you enjoy, you go all out, you have that extra piece of pie and don't feel guilty. Just know that, well, I'm going to have to just spend maybe five more minutes in the sauna a couple times this week. I'm going to have to go on some longer hikes this week. I'm going to, you know, make sure I take the stairs all this week again. And, you know, I just feel like the, for the most part, um, at least people that are working out and yeah, it's, taking care of their health, yeah, they're it's actually making pretty good choices. It's not day that screws anything up. It's the, right... It's, yeah, that's it's always the, interesting. It's the culmination of all of it, you know. Right. So that's that's right. It's the season. And what do they say? People gain on average. People oh, gain. Be more was it like three now. pounds during this? This like the week before Thanksgiving to New Year's. I was reading an article the other day. Was it the week it or like, the day? Yeah, it was like, was it I was three pounds that day. Like that makes more sense. Yeah. That what I'm what I'm getting is 
seven to 10 pounds between Thanksgiving and Christmas is standard. Yeah. That's the New York times reported that. Oh, that sounds more accurate. So, but I mean, that's a lot, but people, people fall off. Like, like you said, Matt, they, they get in that just loop of, well, part of I'm it just going to ride the it out. Stress of the holidays, right? How you stressful is it leading up New to Year's resolution, the holiday? So many people are again. trying to meet year end deadlines with their jobs. Yeah. And then all of a sudden yeah. you got, you know, Christmas shopping traffic is a friggin' disaster. Um, you know, a lot of parties, Christmas parties. So you're drinking all the time. You're probably staying up later. You're staying up later. You're not sleeping as well now, which means the the next day is going to be worse for you. And then that just carries on into the next day after that. And you never really get into a good routine of things. Um, and then really like all this emotion just explodes on, you know, Christmas day or whatever holiday you're celebrating. And, you know, and it's like, oh yeah, you're happy. And there's all this joy, but it's like, oh my God, like I just went through, you know, four weeks of like just a friggin' living nightmare of stress just to get here. And now I got to go back, you know, <laughs> and for us, you know, it's crazy working in the gyms. It's busy. I tell my clients a lot to, you know, just be aware of that they, that's going to happen. You know, Christmas parties, poor eating, poor food, like people are going to bring in like all these platters, donuts, munchkins, like you got to be ready for it and pick and choose your battles like of course Thanksgiving Day you're gonna go crazy, you're gonna eat it all. Um, oh yeah. What else? Easily. You're gonna yeah. keep going to, cause what do you what do you average like two three Christmas parties per company? Um, and then it's just I just tell people just you got to be smart. Like the days before Thanksgiving, if you know you're gonna go crazy, you know back off a little bit, but get workouts in, and then. Go crazy for that weekend and then yeah. try to get back then, on some sort of routine the, uh, you until know, these does, road it, bumps the come up. Is the actual poor you kind of veer off exercising here what's creating the weight gain or is it the stress of the of dealing with realizing you're you know so uh, so far off your routine or shaming yourself because you're eating poorly and feeling bad about it now and so now that stress is you know causing weight gain as well so I mean it's yeah. really just a I feel like it's a compounding effect you know, when it comes to it all, it's a silent killer. That's a good point yeah, about we, the we stress for sure. Account, I mean, you know? the holidays are so stressful. Yeah. 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 And people yeah. don't even people, I mean, obviously I didn't even bring it up in my first, in my first rant of this episode, but um, yeah, it, it's, it definitely is a silent killer. And I've, it's like, if you haven't really well established your routine with the way that you take care of yourself, then yeah, you have so much going on that you just like start dropping things because you're trying to hold on to so much. So yeah, one of them ends up being, unfortunately, what we we drop is like the most important thing to upkeep our vehicle so we can keep doing what we do and be the person we are. And uh, for some reason, we we lose priority of that. We 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 think that's like one of the first things we can forget about is doing stuff for us. Um, so that we can manage everything. So it's pretty, it's pretty interesting how stress is like a double-edged sword in that way. Like not only does the stress pile on and it's like acid running through our, our chem, like our system literally, but then you for you start dropping off uh, tasks and they end up being the ones that would actually take care of you better. Now, what about the other side of that? Like when there's stress and then you have people who kind of like they're winding down for the end of the year, you know, end of the year quotas are kind of coming to the end and they're just kind of like hitting that cruise control button. They're like, hey, I'm just kind of step off the gas pedal for a bit and just, you know, some people take vacation. Sometimes a lot of people have that last week of the year off Mm -hmm. or it's very quiet and it's just the kids Mm -hmm. have vacation. So then it's a time to, hey, let's go out and do other things. Let's go to dinner. You know, some people actually go away. I think it could be a yeah, little bit. Both. That's a Have good point. Like I got that? a client right now who's um, spending a week away, and you know, he, there's a tiny little gym there. I'm assuming, but it's probably nothing to what he's used to. But you know, it's gonna throw him off track See, a little this bit. Is, this and, is um, why I think it's yeah, so like important that, that I can like, think of actually. And I don't know if you guys do this, but with my clients, I try to make sure that they're very comfortable doing body weight exercises first and foremost. Not only is it good from a just a foundational level of like getting to know their body and the awareness when they first start training and working out but 
it makes them so much more resourceful when they are on the go or traveling and they don't have any equipment to, to be masters of push-ups and pull-ups and, you know, different planks and things that they can do like in a hotel room or at a, at a family, staying at a family mem- member's house, you know, where they can just pick up and go and know what to do because they're so familiar with, you know, utilizing their body weight and doing body, body weight training. Um, I, th- I feel like it's, do, do you, do you feel like, sorry, go ahead nailed it i was gonna say do you, do you feel it. like that um yeah 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 no no that, that's that's it do you feel like you're you're helping people see that they can actually get a good workout with their body and that you had to like almost convince them by get, getting them to do a lot of just just body weight movements and getting them out of breath or okay okay i do but but i but i i preface the coaching in a way where I want people to understand that most, the most successful people in the world in whatever endeavor that they, they are in are not, not people who re- well, they're not people who rely on resources. They are people who rely on their resourcefulness. You know what I mean? So like, for example, I, if I need to change the carburetor okay. on my, yeah. um, lawnmower, yeah. right. I am not going to wait until I have a small engine mechanic who's going to do that and take it to somebody and pay somebody to do that. I have YouTube. I have Amazon. I was just two weeks ago. I literally ordered a carburetor for my lawnmower on Amazon, 15 bucks. I looked up YouTube free and I changed a carburetor on my, on my lawnmower simply because I'm resourceful. And so the point here is when you make people realize that it's the resourcefulness that's going to make them successful and be able to accomplish specific tasks, specific goals, endeavors, they are not going to make excuses when they don't have the resources available to them. They're going to go out and figure out a way to to get it done regardless of the situation. And so that's really something that I like to preface to my clients and, and just, it's more of a, this is a life, like we're, we're life coaches too. We have the opportunity to really change people's perspective on how they view fitness and health and life just from these simple conversations not just teaching people how to work out but teaching them how to have the right mindset around working out is even more critical right that's the that's the gift that keeps on giving when you're not around anymore mic drop yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) a little christmas a little christmas pun (laughs) yeah (laughs) and on to the you know the, the plug the advertisements no. No, but I think I think it's really good for for people to understand that they can still get a good workout and exercise in without having all these fancy dumbbells, racks, machines. Like on Thursday, I'll I won't go to the gym, but I'll do a at home body workout with just volume and get the heart rate up to the point where I'm still gonna get Absolutely. a killer workout. And I've told a lot of my clients that like you don't need to come to a gym. You can do just like a 30 minute yeah. burner in your living room. Yeah. And I, be think, fine. Um, I think the best word you threw in there, Mike was resourceful. And reliant on and external. I things. think it's, it's so yeah. important for people to not be so structured with the way they ha- feel yeah. like they have to. Yeah. And the way they have to work out just right. at all the, the gym, stars just have to be aligned format, yeah. and just this rep count and just hit just this number and hit, hit this number of sets. Um, that's, that's the start. That's the way to learn. But after that, you pull those structures away and you can get more play involved and you can do those same workouts and activate those same muscles and use those same movement patterns and hit those same energy systems in right in any environment. And you learn how to make it happen in different environments. And even something as simple as like, you know, go outside and if it's a nice day, the sun's out, pop off your shirt, get some vitamin D, Go for a short, like two mile run. Maybe put on like a a YouTube yoga stretching video, and you know whatever, whatever your body needs at that time. It might not be just about lifting or body weight exercises. It can be about anything. But just having that resourcefulness, um, I think, plays a huge role. And that was a, a good word drop there about coaching clients like that. Because um, yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to. Th- we don't want people to think that that there is the best Momentum. program yeah. out there for you right this second. It's, it's inertia. It's just about movement and consistency and tension. And yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot more about that than it is just about one specific program or the, the best program out there, you know, <laughs> on to the next topic. 
<clears throat> what is it? What do you guys? What what what, what are you guys over. into lately? What do you? I mean, are you into any cool supplements? Are you into any cool movies <laughs> or documentaries? We covered a lot of Thanksgiving and holidays. Any good podcasts? What you brought up yesterday, Mike? You texted us about the uh, yes. the Amazon. I thought that, yeah. like, what you brought up yesterday, Mike? You texted us about the uh, the Amazon. I thought that, like, interesting. At first, I thought it was Amazon's own supplement product, but then when you could market it on Amazon, that was like very interesting. Yeah, Nutra Cap Labs. It, well, yeah, it's it's total garbage. It basically there's a so just for for context for the listener, in case there is anybody listening to this, <laughs> this episode, there was an ad. There was an ad that was run on Instagram in my feed um, that said. Uh, basically like you can start your own <laughs> yeah. brand of supplements and then sell them on Amazon. And this company is going to show you how to do that. And um, I mean, it's just, to me, it's just watering down the entire market even more than it is now. And it's so unregulated and, you know, there's just so much garbage out there to just say, Hey, here's an ad for M- Mike, you know, Mike Urso, who has like no experience in making supplements, but we're going to teach you how to do that. Uh, you know, look, I am, I did not, I do not have a PhD in chemistry or biochemistry or anything like that. I am very unqualified to do that, but I could make, I could make a decent amount of money doing this. And I think a lot of people will see that and take that opportunity. And I think it's, it's going to make one the market day. You could even get that more one down. So, I mean, look, social media is good because it keeps us connected, but it also puts this garbage idea in front of people that, you know, is, is unfortunately going to be, uh, you know, a bit of a, I don't know. Uh, I feel like a scar on the whole supplement market. That's, you know, it's already tarnished. You know, the reputation's already a bit tarnished. I just think it's fucking bullshit because it pisses me off that people just can think they can just promote supplements and sell this bullshit and in, in a way that can make they're allowed to make essentially like false claims, but they can back them up so they're not false. Yada da da, whatever, whatever. But there's the fact that there is twenty three million, like over twenty three million people in America with autoimmune issues, like the way that our diets have progressed and and agriculture has progressed and been driven just for profit rather than quality of product it just plays a role in all of this and i i I think socrates said it right when he said if you want to cure all disease look at the gut and we don't recognize that we are literally just putting whatever through our system and it's just causing issues and i don't think I think in a bigger level, I don't I don't like this idea because it it just promotes the wrong thing. If you're trying to get somebody healthy, you're gonna at least advise them that listen, the best thing for you would be go home, make some bone broth. That's gonna be the best protein source for you. Like, all right, well, you know, I'm trying to sell you a product, uh, maybe a collagen powder. That's probably the best protein powder for you, right? And the third best, mm-hmm. you know, to be honest with you, would be like a, a bug po- protein powder. But that would be the yeah, yeah, you, uh, you know, we cricket. tried that. <laughs> <laughs> a little, yeah, cricket, yeah. little cricket powder, a little cocoa powder. Yeah. Ain't nothing to it. Just like chocolate milk. No, it would taste disgusting. <laughs> but there's so many supplements. There's so many supplement companies now. Like if but you the, look the fact that they're what, in this field, ago, right? They're trying you... to be about someone's health. They're trying to put oh, yeah. the other person's needs first, but they're not. They they're completely not. And they're used labeling and big money and advertisement and marketing to to really pull the wool over people's eyes. But then you look at some of the – have you ever looked at like an old magazine you have hanging around from like eight years ago of like muscle and fitness or whatever? Some of these supplements that they're advertising don't even exist anymore. And some of these companies are like, wow, I remember that company. What happened to them? And it's it's interesting how like it comes and goes of like where you can find this product or like this product doesn't even exist on the market anymore. It tells you how – Mark Wahlberg. 
Mark Wahlberg used to have a uh, Mark Wahlberg used to have a supplement in GNC called Marked, and I don't see it there anymore, and I don't even think it exists anymore. It was it was like a hot minute, maybe like a year or two ago, maybe about two years ago. But uh, even like it's just that like if a celebrity has a name, right, and and twenty million. 20 million followers on Facebook or whatever, Instagram. So like, yeah, I'm going to show you this new supplement that I'm making and designing. And so now Mark Wahlberg is going to make yeah. a shit ton of money on that. But on their Instagram, is- right? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. But how legitimate is it? You know, it's just, it, it, I don't know. It's crazy to me. But it is. It absolutely is. And, I, you know, there's What's a marketing, um, not term, but it's about basically like, a 10% turnover. Like, or you can always really account for a 10% turnover. So yeah, once they hit, like even Instagram will kind of have the figure probably for you. They tell you like, if you have X amount of followers, they'll, they'll you'll get X amount per uh, photo that you share. Um, that's why there's so many like Instagram models and it's just, it's just a calculation. So if somebody has 90,000 followers cause they're the Kardashians or something, uh, then guess what? They can sell a product and about 9,000 of their followers will will buy into it It, it's really like manipulation of of position (laughs) but it seems like supplements for these these people are are like like the easy easiest way so yeah there's a lot of money to be made in the supplement industry i think it's i think it's like a 70 percent profit margin market as well um because of but you have to be famous you have to be like on that level of like (laughs) You just gotta have somebody famous to to promote your product. That's it. Right, right. Well, did you guys see the um? I mean, you see the Ronnie Coleman special on Netflix. I did. So sad. It's uh, Ronnie Coleman. What's it? What's it? Return of the King or something? Oh, I check it out. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But he 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 basically runs his own supplement company, but. I mean, I remember watching this guy back in the day on YouTube, and I was like, "This guy is an animal." Two hip replacements, yeah. He used to squat three hundred pounds. Like, he did. What did he say in the documentary? He did like six hundred and seventy pounds for like thirteen or fifteen reps. Absurd. Does he look bad? He's in rough shape. Like, no, he's like back surgeries. He can't barely walk. He's <laughs> yeah, crazy. He probably never did steroids either. Um, <laughs> Definitely didn't do steroids. Yeah. And I think that's what's important about what we bring to the table is that we have the opportunity to – and we spend our life doing this of figuring out what's the legit, what's not. And we've almost tried nearly everything – not everything obviously because there's always more and more coming out. But we will continue to try more and keep figuring out what's the good and what's the bad. And that's why – I, I love having you all the time, Mike, on board in this yeah. this whole endeavor Seriously. and our journey because you've gone through so many experiences and you've tried so many different things and you figured out what is good to promote and what is like, all right, don't do this. <laughs> and the, and the good stuff, but I mean like the natural stuff, like the like the stuff well, that they oh, yeah. are studying with so. the mushrooms and the mycelium but and I all have. that stuff. Not just <laughs> try, I'm not telling yeah. everybody, all the listeners. Oh, yeah, I just want to make course. sure they know. I'm yeah. not saying that Mike's tried steroids. So that's that's definitely not the yeah, point. I mean, I'm look, I, out there I injecting am one of those everything. That will pretty much do anything <laughs> at least once. For the oh really? For the most part, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like oh, I'm nice, like, nice. Yeah, this is going to be crazy. I think you should try that. I'm like, sure, let me try it because I also want to be a voice. Well, we need you well. on the team. I don't want to. I don't want to have a. Uh, a, a you're like you know, Charlie of opinion that comes funny. from an angle where if I'm talking from an ignorant place <laughs> about it, you know what I mean? Like I want to not only say I read the research, but also I have a subject. Yeah, I have an ex- exactly. I have a, a subjective kind of anecdotal uh, experience that I can share with people. On top of that, even like two, three years, and when I write, you know, on a daily basis, I like to have topics to write about. And so, doing self experiments and things on yourself is just a great way to kind of. A great way to do that, yeah. Yeah, you, you narrate the whole process for people, and then you feel like you're going through it as well. I mean, this is why we like the podcasts like Joe Rogan, you know, and and guys like that. That when they sit across, and they talk about deep, in depth topics about their personal experiences with these things. You almost feel like you're experiencing it as well, or at least you have very good firsthand. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, given these people are their their experiences are very subjective, and the things that they go through are are their point of view. Yeah. They're also a lot You're of these people are subject matter experts. Who may yeah, be much better view who may be, of it. You know, right. uh, you know, PhDs in nutrition. You know, like uh, you know, some of those guys that were on the Rogan podcast not so long ago. And so, not only do they have that experience where they're living it and, and trying these things out on themselves, but they also have the the uh, educational background as well to kind of back it all up. Yeah, no, and I love I love Rhonda Patrick, and I love all of her, all of her resources. And and I do want to mention one thing though is just you know it's a shame that when it comes to it, um, someone will then like. I love Ben Greenfield and this is not a knock at him at all and, and any of his resources that he promotes. Um, but it's just, maybe he can eventually figure out er, and understand that when you talk about a product and, and your experience with it, and then you say that you sell it on your store and here's like the coupon code, it's like right then and there, you just make me question everything you just said before that. And like, but I, I know because I've, I've dive into his stuff more that, He's not really coming from a place that's trying that to just convince most you to buy this product. Me. He's trying to give you like a, an in-depth look at it, but still it's just like, it, I feel like for a split second, I think you lose a little credibility and yeah. I have to like dive deeper and I just wonder what else is the other audience thinking. But most people aren't asking that question. Most people aren't even asking. Maybe not with him specifically though, not with him specifically, but for like for the layman who is, is, yeah, they, they really, I feel like they're going into it bl completely blind. They're walking in the GNC. And, and and have you guys ever walked into GNC before and talked to the, the kid at the counter? And just ask, like, I do, it all the, I do it all the time. Every single time I go in there, I know exactly what I want. I know exactly like what I'm getting. What I'm buying. I know exactly what I want. I know exactly like what I'm getting. What I'm buying. I want to ask them to talk to them i'm like what does this guy know what kind oh, yeah. of recommendations does he have <laughs> That's is he going to you know sh um you know steer me towards one thing versus the other because yeah. the company's saying hey you know we're we but got too much inventory let's push this product out you know clear some shelf space for this new thing coming out you know i like to chat with them a little bit because i just just so interesting and some of them are extremely intelligent and very well read up on some of this nutrition and supplementation and some of them are completely ignorant have no clue and so they know their very specific little things that they probably have their little pitch that they use every time a, a guy who looks like me comes in and looking for a pre-workout right they have their whole little spiel that they go through every time because it's just easy but i guarantee you like you go a little deeper below the surface and ask these guys some questions and they're like, uh -huh, oh, what are you talking about? I don't know. Cause I've done it. Right. And they just don't know <laughs> when you go, when you, go, you know, don't, aren't they, I wouldn't doubt. aren't they told to promote the GNC products first? Uh, I would imagine that that's what I heard or if someone I knew worked there and they were like, yeah, we're supposed to promote this first before any other product in because they get so much commission on that. But it's, it's always I feel like I've only – They always recommend like everything. I've, I've had a, it's a lot of good experiences at GNC, honestly. Like, I, But I, I don't, I don't oh, go yeah. there that often. I've never really seen someone ignorant there because every time I go there, they're always asking me like 10 questions about what I want. And that's that's how I kind of feel a little bit more comfortable because I feel like they're like trying to dive in and yeah. figure out what would be like the best product for it. But I, I also don't go that often. I've probably been maybe once this year. Actually, probably none, zero this year. I just I just was reading you know like Glassdoor, um, it's like a website where employees of companies leave reviews about what they thought about the company they worked for. So I just looked up, real quick. yeah, and, and and indeed, and I found uh, this one employee who said they only pay you so you get a, a base kind of wage there, but then they pay you commission if you push. They only pay you the commission on supplements that they ask you to push. So like there's probably like a monthly get rid of they only pay commission on the supplements that they ask you to push so like you crazy yeah um so so we're, we're coming in just keep in mind you go into a supplement store there's already a huge bias as soon as you walk in the door so know what you're do your research that's the whole point though right we, we people there is the internet people like you have a freaking computer in your pocket everywhere you go all you have to do is look this stuff up Go to examine.com. Great website. I mean, what other, what you guys must know some other websites as well. Um, yeah, but, but think, but I don't know. For me, I think 
the way that I, my upbringing brought me to realize is that like, there's nothing external that I can, I can get that's going to like help with everything I want to achieve. Right. So like I knew more that I figured out or not figured out, but had to essentially just, you know, understand that it was more so like everything that I needed was already here with me, like my mind and kind of like what you're saying before, like, what are you going to do when you don't have this stuff? And I've I kind of always thought about that in all the supplements that I've ever taken and, and wanted to continue to take. It's like, well, what, what happens when I don't have this? Am I going to lose like this, this sense of confidence, or this strength or this look like, um, you will. Yeah. yeah you right. It, it, just, it just deflates. It'll go away. <laughs> so, you can't survive without this. I think protein. it is important to just like be resourceful and maybe less is more. And that's, that's why I, like all I do now is um, a little bit of uh, beta alanine and a little bit of citrulline malate. I think one's a salt, um, help with vasodilation, and one helps draw uh, energy back to the muscle, the, the um, beta alanine, I believe. But other than that, that's like it. I just like I, I try to even not have water during my workout because I want my body to try to be better at just efficient like that. I don't, you don't use. Um, headphones on workout or like music i want to be focused on my workout i don't know i just figure less is more when it comes to the supplementation world oh yeah i agree there's just too much now too much of uh oh this will this will cure you or this will make you lose weight and yeah like this is the protein to have at this time this is the protein to have at this time and because we've always had that debate people like oh i I have this protein in case. I, mean, I used to do it. I used to do a protein yeah. shake oh, yeah. and then a casein oh, shake. Yeah. A morning shake. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, and then pee and then hemp protein. And people are like, oh, I'm like at the end of the day, it's protein. Yeah. You know? And then at the end of the day, eat I, animal products. I, I learned it. actually by watching Eric because he would sit in the break room and eat like a, like, uh, they were cooked, but there was nothing on it. It was just a cooked sweet potato and boiled chicken and boiled vegetables. And I'm just like, damn, son. And I'm over here with like a shitty ass shake, complaining about my colitis. And I'm like, all right, I just got to go eat real foods. Just got to eat real stuff again and like cut out every bullshit thing, even sauces and spices. And yeah, I, I, I just, I got back to eat, enjoying the taste of just like a well- marinated chicken breast on, on this probably more so in the oven than boiling it i gotta say eric that's pretty just i can't do that i can't do that for that long that's tough but like mike said i think i think you have to go through that growth of like oh i have to i gotta go try this because everyone in the field is doing this sort of protein and pre-workout and then once you get it and people ask you can you get a feel for what you're gonna tell them and it's like okay well you obviously might not need all of this but if you're your certain goals, you might need this, you know, it, yeah, it depends. absolutely. And like, you're just being that much better of a health coach to be like, you know, be like, Oh, I'm not going to say that you should have a protein shake. You should have whole food. But you know, just in case, if you had to, we're in a bind and you needed a protein shake for whatever reason, you know, this would be my best recommendation. I, I think that does go a long way. And that's why it's super important that, um, you know, we've, we've all kind of tried different things and, um, we have someone like, like Mike, the wild card who just like try everything and just jump off the cliff. Dude. Can I, can I even tell you, can I even tell you like some of the stuff I tried? I don't even want to talk about it maybe on this podcast, but, but, but I mean, we could go through a laundry list of things that I've tried before and, um, not, not even like in the way of like drugs, because that's just one thing. The other thing is like, Health, fitness, all sorts of different things, man. I, I literally – performance enhancing stuff. Oh, yeah. Like uh, I could tell you crazy stuff. I mean where do we even start? Where's your curiosity? Let's start there. <laughs> well, well I, I almost think Eric and I should start and then you can like add on to what you've agreed, done, what we have, and then keep going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eric, what, what do you got? What have I yeah. tried? Mm. Way casing pre workout. I've tried some of the um, what's it the the deer antler velvet, the uh, the IGF. Uh, tried some of that stuff. Haven't really didn't really see much. You know, I didn't. I think the claims are kind of more than what it offered. I uh, I didn't really see an increase of growth or size or 
not noticeable with with my diet. Uh, what else? Uh, creatine. Yeah. I'm big into creatine. I love creatine. <laughs> That's probably the only supplement I'll tell people I use. It's like give me powdered creatine. I'll mix it with anything. Um, Does this but make also you feel stronger? Complex, Does it just too. like replenish your muscle between sets quicker, or is it like um, you can push more during the work? Well, not even that. Just like the the studies of like the the cognitive benefits of it and in the longevity part, um, and then obviously mitochondria health. But then just thinking, maybe it's placebo, maybe it's not. But is this monohydrate or hydrochloric? All right, monohydrate. No, and I—I I mean, I've mixed it with juices. I've mixed it with coffee. I've mixed it with basically anything to try to get a, a an a advantage and edge. Yeah, creatine's one of those things, man, that has just stood the test of time. Like it's the most well-researched supplement out there. It's been around since I've been in high school. Oh yeah, it's been around since. I mean, I graduated oh one, but creatine, man, has been out there forever, and it's overwhelming the evidence. And and there's so many different versions of it, but honestly, creatine monohydrate is probably just the best best form of it. Um, there's even studies that are now showing that, and we talked about this too recently, I think, you know, not recently, but months ago as creatine as the actual, um, nootropic. Um, so when you take it over the course of, I think three to four weeks plus, it actually has more of a nootropic effect on it as well. Uh, which which is pretty interesting. Yeah. So I find, I I definitely, I don't know. I, I don't, see much of a nootropic effect but i do try a whole bunch of other crazy shit too so i don't, I don't know you know what's what's mixed in with but, you, but you'd but you'd recommend this you'd recommend to, to do monohydrate yeah okay cool creatine oh 100 percent for endurance for uh, especially for power output like if you want quick explosive power you play a sport like baseball or you pay, play a sport where you got to be fast and explosive and then regenerate ATP quickly. Yeah. Creatine is a, a game changer. And and if you never take it and you do start taking it, like you'll see an immediate, almost an immediate uptake in your performance. Yeah. Within like a week. Oh, yeah. We might need to do a whole episode just on creatine. Look, sounds like, but, uh, so is that all you is that all you've tried, Eric? Is that everything? Because I want to get to Mike's. Yeah, that's pretty much. I used to go into vitamin shop, GNC, and be like a hundred dollars, especially creatine protein. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty. Lame. No, I, I really haven't. I mean, I've done all different types of In protein and powder, all different types of workouts. But I stopped all the workout pre workouts, excuse me, that had the creatine in it and all that extra stuff that I didn't know half of it, but. I stopped it after I got first diagnosed with UC and then I just like never really found a pre-workout that I wanted to try again that was actually not causing issues. Like I found like an all natural one with like there's some amino acids in it, but it didn't really do anything. It just, just had some sugar in it. Um, then, you know, I've never really, a lot of nice, maybe yeah, jittery. pretty much. But the only thing I've ever done like isolates of is the beta alanine, citrulline malate, and other than that, I've tried an estrogen blocker. I never really noticed anything on that. Um, I've done all different types of protein powder, whey, um, casein, egg protein, plant protein, um, even uh, cricket protein. <laughs> um, that's that's pretty much it. I haven't really tried anything other. Oh, I did do um, Paul Stamets's, and I still do, Stamets 7. Um, just his total blend of lion's mane and different mycelium fibers and, and mushrooms, essentially cultures, um, that help with, uh, brain function and neuro regeneration. Um, but that, oh, and vitamin D, that's probably about it. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> basic. <laughs> yeah. Basic supplement. All right, Mike, you're up. No, look, I can I can go like down the whole friggin' line. Let me just go to the GNC supplement menu and just make sure that I don't miss anything. Um, no, look, I mean I've gone anywhere from multis to fish oils, right? Obviously, those are um, staples for the most part in my. Um, I like magnesium. I I've definitely messed with different formulations of magnesium because ma there's magnesium citrate. I've taken malate before and then um, glycinate. So there's different types of um, salts that they bind the magnesium to. And um, 
you know, they essentially have different effects. Like glycinate has more of a, um, a, a, like a calm, relaxing effect. So you take it before sleep, it works really well. If you take magnesium malate, it's more used for um, people who maybe have like, uh, uh, what's the, the tissue, degenerative tissue disease, um, MS, um, you know, it helps with like, you know, just the nervous system and your body's contractions and it's actually more uplifting. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. I've taken uh, L-theanine, um, everything Eric said, pretty much all of those, everything Matt said, pretty much took all those. Um, and then yes. I mean, we can get into some of the wackier stuff or, or the things that are a little bit m more atypical like um let me see i have to like pull up a list of stuff so i've done uh, for energy i've taken exogenous ketones so ketone salts beta hydroxy yes yeah it's a it's a tea uh no i haven't haven't tried that um i have tried the lion's mane obviously I, so it was and talk to you about that. I've tried um, cordyceps mushrooms. I've tried the cordyceps, which are supposed to be more energy balance. Uh, um, the same company on it who makes Alpha Brain, which I've also tried, um, also makes something called Shroom okay. Tech Sport, and it's a kind of like endurance supplement using uh, different formulations of <clears throat> of these mushrooms. And, uh, How'd you like the Alpha Brain? Uh, alpha brain is good. I prefer the, so alpha brain is more of a natural mixture of compounds. It has, <clears throat> it does have uh, cordyceps mushrooms in it as well as theanine, some of those other nootropic blends, uh, alpha GPC. <laughs> but um, I, I prefer the synthetic ones more work on the, you know, the, the, the choline and acetylcholine pathways and all that. Um, things like uh, aniracetam or Piratacetam, anything from the racetam family works really well um i mean literally like it, it's like alpha brain on steroids um where you my experience with nootropics is yeah. like really if you ever get social anxiety being around a group or be speaking in front of people all that goes away when i take a, a really good nootropic like it just it, yeah it's almost like a calm confident um boost of your intellect you know so you just like you're not stumbling over your words you can basically rattle off like the dictionary and that's been my experience with it if you've taken a really good one i i got a couple friends turned on really? to doing nootropics so i don't take a pre-workout i don't like the the jittery feeling that comes along with most pre-workouts so i've never really gotten into them all that much but what i do like is a good nootropic pre-workout or pre um training for jujitsu wow. Because when my brain feels like it's functioning really well and it's on point, my body just kind of follows along for the ride, you know? So like, for me, try a nootropic before you work out. And I've turned a couple friends onto this and they're like, yeah, that's one of the most focused, like best workouts I've ever had. Because she can train so well. Yeah. 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 So what else? I've tried uh, BCAA. I, I take every day. I got... I'm gonna drop one more real quick because I know you'll keep going. Glucosamine chondroitine. I remember I did that for a long time, for a short period, or a short period of time, for like six months to help with uh, joint pain. It really didn't do anything for me. Uh, glu glucosamine chondroitin. No, I think you have to take it for years and years and spend hundreds of dollars for it to have any effect at all. Oh yeah, yeah. didn't do anything for me. But I did take these um, these vitamin E and K. Um, like isomers that were like super radical and um, that they were like soak, they were supposed to soak up inflammation right at my um, Osgood slaughters, like right at my knee. And this, this medication was like made just for Osgood slaughters. And I, it, it really did work. Like it, it was my thing used to hurt me all the time. I did that for, I think it was like 30, I don't know, maybe 30 days, 60 days. And I really made a huge difference. I could get back to working out and I strengthened it again. And that was like three, four years ago. I'll have to get the name of it. But yeah, keep going, Mike. What else you got, Mike? BCAs? Back to Mike. Yeah. Back to my list. <laughs> Back to my list. So BCAAs, I take all the time. I do find a, a huge difference in maintaining good endurance through my workout if I'm sipping on BCAAs throughout as opposed to just plain water. Um, so those I find very effective because um, I there are days when I don't take it and I notice a difference. 
I'm just slower. I'm not slower. I don't recover as fast. Um, yeah, I feel like it's more of the recovery thing with me, like, especially like in the sport, most of it's like a, a five to six minute round and then one, two minute break. And then we're back right back on going whole hog. So yeah. Um, what else I've tried? I've used nicotine as a nootropic yeah. that works really well. Did you ever try a, uh, so not smoking, right? Obviously the combustion, the, <laughs> But no, I actually use the lozenge. So um, uh, Nicoderm makes a lozenge. It's just like a tiny little tic-tac size thing that you just drop underneath your tongue. And you know that you have those uh, glands in your underneath your tongue that actually absorb things into your bloodstream. Right? So put a bunch yeah, of patches you put this lozenge under side. there. It's kind of like <laughs> if you were you know, taking a dip in a way. Uh, but you put it under your tongue. It slowly releases um, nicotine into your system. And uh, nicotine is actually a very powerful nootropic. I don't know if you ever tried tried it before, but uh, yeah, you know people talk about getting the buzz off of nicotine, uh, off of smoking mm-hmm. a cigarette. Well, this is just the way to get the nicotine, the benefit of the nicotine without the uh, you know <laughs> negative causes of smoking. Um, but yeah, very effective nootropic as well. Um, what else have I tried? Gosh, huh. so it sounds like the best were the the the. Um... Your endogenous ketones and the nicotine, I guess for cognition, I guess for cognition performance, right? Yeah. Now we're, we didn't get into the semi illegal slash, you know, (laughs) yeah, but I have tried a bunch of different type of sleep supplements. I mean, um, you know, L-theanine, that's another pretty good. So L-theanine is a amino that you can take in the morning with your coffee. Uh, it's pretty cheap. It's very expensive. It's like maybe 10 to 15 bucks for like 60 doses of this. And you take it once a day. So that's a good two month supply for like 10, 15 bucks. And you basically take theanine with your morning coffee. And instead of getting all jittery, it actually is gives you a calm focused energy. Um, and, um, it's like, it kind of like helps desensitize the jitteriness of your coffee and just turn your, just like enhance your brain function. Um, that one works really well. Yeah. Theanine. Um, I've taken collagen protein. Um, you know, like I said, B vitamin complexes, things like that. I still take B vitamin curcumin. Uh, don't really know that I saw a difference. Curcumin is uh, a turmeric, um, compound. Uh, it's supposed to be anti-inflammatory. It's it is very, very powerful anti-inflammatory, and it's actually one of the only anti-inflammatories that can break through the blood-brain barrier and help with any inflammation in the brain. I didn't find it effective, and I, I don't know. But you know, it's just important to incorporate in your diet. You just want to have like some, you know, maybe a curry meal once in a while. Yeah, I don't know if I'm all that inflamed to begin with because uh, there are so many different things that I do to eliminate inflammation in other ways, like sauna and things like that, nutrition and so on. So it's probably too much of a of already a clean space to to really notice the difference with another one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, and then outside of that, I've tried all sorts of different you know, crazy shit. I don't even know if you want to get into it. <laughs> Look, I've tried uh, SARMs. I've tried, what else? Peptides. Uh, I'm trying BPC-157 right now. Uh, or- oh, shit. That's that's that drug that Ben Greenfield was talking about, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's the Wolverine healing. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll tell you my experience. So I've been taking it since Saturday. So it's only, this is only day three. Um, they say it acts pretty fast and I would say that so far I'm not injecting it. So I, I do have a needle and I'm, you know, you know, uptaking it, but I'm actually, in, um, just injecting it orally. So I hold it under my tongue for, you know, about a minute or two. And then I just swallow it because it is actually a, um, orally bioavailable peptide, which most are not, but this one is. Um, and what it does when you take it orally, because this peptide specifically is made from the gastric juices that are already in the stomach. So it has a very uh, good, um, effective uh, nature into your gut. And so what it does is it, ha- it heals a uh, leaky gut, all that stuff. So I don't know if I told you guys this, I have uh, eczema, nice. which as we know is an nice. autoimmune disease. 
And so far, it's my eczema is usually pretty bad. In three days, I've seen a significant improvement in nothing else in my body except my eczema has started to improve. And I have not changed my diet whatsoever. So I, I have a feeling that my, my gut is starting to heal a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying, I'm doing, a trial, I'm doing a trial run on this one, right? And I'm doing it orally for two weeks. I'm going to try that and see what kind oh, of change I'm going to wow. observe, take some notes, Dang. you know, write That's about it up. a little bit because this is also going into my book. And, um, and then, yeah, I'm going to probably try it again take two weeks off, try it again. Dude, and I'm going to have to get this my, stuff my like left right knee, now. I feel like my lateral and medial uh, area of my knee, my meniscus is definitely strained in a way. Okay. Will you, will you inject it locally? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to do it. I'll do two injections a day, one on either side of the knee right at that site and then just monitor it and see if it heals. Um, so this is a, this is a peptide that is not um, uh, illegal or banned by WADA or USADA so far. So this can be taken by athletes who are injured and need to like get back on the, on, on the path to healing very quickly. Um, I don't suspect that a lot of people know about it mainstream yet. And so this is only. Well, they're still conducting research on it um, to, for, for, to have um, evidence that it provides benefits for people. Cause right now, all of it just shows for rats right now, but it's absolutely phenomenal. And the not the, like the regenerative effects it has on like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like to see my skin improving. Cause it's been so rashy and, and like scaly for so long. And it's like, it's, it's funny. My eczema is starting to just dissipate a little bit. Well, you know what? Everyone's going to wonder if you're just going to like, just stab yourself real quick and just see if you heal like Wolverine. I know. I know, right? No, I'm not going to. Uh, but, but, but it's interesting stuff. So there's that. And then there's another one out there. So BPC-157 is supposed to work on uh, angiogenesis. And for, what you, for those who don't know what that means, it's basically the like uh, kind of like the reproduction of uh, blood vessels, new blood vessels in your body. So there's this other peptide called TB-500 that is banned by – WADA, not for us, but for, you know, obviously professional athletes. And it actually works on more of the, the, um, tissue and bone, I believe, um, versus, you know, just the blood vessels. So this actually has like bone, like, so you break a bone and this stuff can heal your bone faster. Um, so pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, on this, I'm just I just looked up like one thing on um, PubMed, it just says BPC 157 and blood vessels, and this is just a little clip from it. It just says in the respect of BPC 157, um, it was the most potent angiomodulating agent, um, acting in optimizing the healing process. So yeah, it's that's pretty crazy. I really want to know what happens as it's healing your gut because I might need to start doing that. Yeah. So I read up on it a little bit, um, that taking it orally would, would have like more, yeah, it helps the gut and it's more systemic, the effect versus a localized. Now, obviously like when you inject it, it's still going to go through your body. But uh, what I hear when you take it, um, you know, orally is that it goes to the place of your body that needs the most like help or assistance in repair. So, you know, wherever that is, the body just t soaks it up in that place the most, um, so unless you inject it, you know, locally. So yeah, I just thought that was really interesting. I've read that from a couple different sources, Ben Gren Ben Greenfield being one of them, but, uh, yeah, man, I was like, well, I've got nothing to lose. I found a great, um, resource for different peptides and stuff that I've used in the past. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very inexpensive. I can't believe how inexpensive it is for, for, for what it is. I mean, it's very delicate. You have to be very careful when you're reconstituting it. Um, yeah, well, it comes as a powder that's stuck to the bottom of this tiny vial with a rubber stopper, and you basically have to reconstitute it with bacteriostatic water. So it's a sterile form of water that you um, slowly inject into the bottle and stir it very slowly because the peptides are extremely fragile. And, um, and then, yeah, you just store it in your refrigerator and it instantly mixes and then you just, you know, click back your insulin, uh, your instant insulin poker and get have at it. Oh, you, you actually inject it under your tongue? I do not inject it. No, I spray it. My tongue. I will, I will not 
Yeah, I'm not in. Inge- I'm not looking to heal my tongue. My tongue's in good shape. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so this is <laughs> this says on on uh, Amazon it's um, 150 dollars for 50 milligrams. That sounded about right. On Amazon, they don't sell that on Amazon. I can see it right now. I'm looking at it right now. I guess they do. Look at that. And there's two of them. I see another one. BBC One Three Seven Five Milligrams for seventy five bucks. That's way too expensive, though. I paid. I paid like thirty five dollars for mine. Well, you better stock up and sell that shit on Amazon. <laughs> so I heard about Sweet. it. What, what about? Speaking of supplements too, uh, creatine, man, right, Eric? It's like the best bang oh, for your buck supplement out. It's so cheap. Oh yeah, that's I was hundred percent. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like the winners were creatine and neuro neurotropics. Have you ever used any um, special creams or anything like that, or oils to help with um, repairing any muscle tissue or joints? Because I've I've used like that magnesium stuff. I've heard they call it, but I don't I didn't really notice anything. Yeah, I've used the magnesium ray, so it's a magnesium oil. I've tried that. It's not actually an oil. I think it's more of like a salt. It's just magnesium oxide, I think. Yeah, I've tried that before. It's like a really tingly feeling on your body. Um, I, didn't find any that, I didn't find that much of an effect of it. Uh, what I like for creams is the um, the hemp um, CBD cream. I found that very good um, for like any kind of muscle soreness as well as pain. Uh, it helps out a little bit. Uh, it definitely helped with my eczema because it's very anti antimicrobial and anti um, uh, inflammatory and antibacterial. So it's really good stuff. Yeah, it's expensive. I didn't really notice anything else though. Is there are there different brands that you've tried that are good and bad that are out there that you can help steer us in the right direction? Uh, I have tried. I have tried the brand Hemp Lucid. Um, I know, I know. There's Herb Strong, which is out there, which I have not tried, but they make a recovery cream as well. Um, but those are really the only ones. I mean, I, I I know Charlotte's Web is a pretty popular product as well. They make a CBD tincture, but also uh, their CBD cream or topical is supposed to be really good as well. Charlotte's Web has a really well established name and i'll uh i'll go through and i think i'll i'll uh at least play it back to myself and maybe eric can edit it still but i'll go through and um put in some show notes for everybody so that we can at least have this stuff in the um in the links for people to look further if they want to um but i think this kind of wraps it up for today what do you guys think any any closing statements enjoy the turkey yeah get fat And happy holidays.